Hello again, it's Peter here. Welcome to another vlog. Now today we're not using any dies, we're not using any embossing folders. What we are using is a pencil, some acrylic and a glue gun. And when we combine the three, hopefully we're going to make just a little bit of magic. Watch the movie. So here we are, we've got our Sizzix multi-tool with the blade in and just a normal HP pencil. It is good to get a quality HP pencil because it's better wood and it carves more easily. A um, couple of tips. When you're whittling with a blade like this, don't move the blade. Keep your thumb on the back and press your other thumb against there and you're pushing like so. The blade should be quite shallow, it shouldn't be too steep otherwise you'll take or you're likely to take a big chunk out of the pencil because of course the wood has a grain. So what this does is it gives me a lovely texture to work on which when I dry brush at the end it's going to show up all these little cuts and cracks and so on and so forth until I get... So I want to carve it down to about there. So rather than go through all that, here are a couple which I prepared earlier. Now in front of me what I've got, I've got my glue gun and it's sitting on this lovely stand. Now one of the things we know about glue guns is they have a lead coming off them. And this makes them unstable so whatever stand you have on the front they do tend to tip over. So Sizzix have been very clever in bringing out this lovely adjustable stand. You can adjust the angle to suit yourself. Also there is a channel in the side to keep some of your glue sticks to hand and we will be using quite a few today. Now, I've also got this glue gun accessory kit and let's take a look in this. This again is a Sizzix product and this is for use of the glue gun as a creative tool because it's not just about sticking two bits of wood together. It's far more than that. Um, and what we've got here is some finger protectors so when you, when you move it, if you want to spread the glue there's a little ridge there and you can do some marvellous things with hot glue. Hopefully we'll see some of those at some point in the future in a vlog or a blog. Uh, so we've got these little tips. I'm going to use this one with a point on it today and I'm going to use this to spread the glue. Uh, we've also got this wonderful little tool. It's silicon coated so it's great for holding something in place or manipulating glue, making ridges in it and this spatula end as well for spreading the glue. So if you want to use it to get dimension in a surface, you're doing a mixed media make, absolutely ideal little tool. What it's also great for is if you've got shrink plastic and you want to hold it in place. It's great because this is silicon tipped so it's not going to heat up and stick to the plastic. Handy, handy little tool. But we're going to start off by applying some glue to our first pencil to make our first magic wand. Um, I'll take this one here. Now, this first one is going to look something like one which belongs to a certain boy wizard. I'm sure we all know who that is. Um, my daughter is absolutely obsessed with the Harry Potter films and books at the moment, which is fine by me because um, they're a lot of fun. And she's got a birthday party coming up and it's going to be Harry Potter themed. So I'm going to be making quite a few of these in the coming weeks. Now you can see I'm keeping the pencil turning. Pop down the glue stick in there. And the reason I'm keeping it turning is because this glue is still hot. So if I let it settle just for a second this is all going to fall off the edge. And you see it's trying to do that now so I need to be really clever about how I do this. It takes some getting used to but it's fine once you do get used to it. So I just want to start off there getting the glue in place. Now one of the things about our glue gun it runs very hot and that's great because it means you don't have to slow down or stop to allow the glue gun to heat up again. And What I'm doing you can see is I'm letting it run towards the edge getting this glue over and what I'll do next is pop this in some cold water, like so. 
Now that helps cool the glue. It's still, you can still mold it at this point as I'm going to do here. I'm going to press that against that surface, but it's not hot to the touch at this point. So we're going to let that run down. All these little bits that come off it as well, they kind of add to it, they add to its charm. So we'll cool that again. And I'll sort of try to flatten out the end like so. Now, that is kind of ready to go and I'm going to continue down the barrel of the pencil applying more glue, not as thick as I was before, but keep it turning and that helps it settle. See, so even while I'm putting a new glue stick in, I'm keeping this turning and uh, there you go, how about that, a man multitasking? Goodness me, wonders will never cease. So I'm pumping this out. You can see it's coming out. It's, the glue is really hot. This glue gun, as I, do, as I said, it runs that bit hotter. And it's also got a on-off switch on the side. So if you're leaving it on the side while you're working, there is a little switch so you don't have to keep going back to the mains to turn your glue gun on and off. Not only that, it has this precision nozzle. It's a very long nozzle, so it helps you use it almost, almost like a pen, which, which is great for precision application of the glue. I'm going to keep that turning again. And when it comes to the bottom, I'm going to bring this in now, and I'm going to take some of this glue at the base, still turning, still turning, and I'm going to smooth that out slightly using this silicon tool. There. That's just about where I want it. Maybe, maybe I'll add a little more glue up the top here. And let that run down. Just to give it a bit more dimension. A bit more bulk at the top there. And there. That's good to go. And I'll pop it into my water. Let that cool off. Okay, I'm going to pop this off to one side. Allow that to set solid and dry. Then I'm going to take my second pencil. Now, Slightly different technique for this one. <clears throat> and I'm also going to be using some of this lovely Ice Diamond by Pin Flare. This is a very chunky, it's almost like very chunky salt. Uh, this will give me some texture <clears throat> at the top of my next make. Um, and again, I'm going to come, as we did before, starting at the top and I keep turning, reach for another glue stick. See what, how handy these channels are running down the side there. You're not fishing around for a glue stick. Very well thought through. And we'll keep that turning, especially as we build up the bulk in this glue. Keep it turning all the way, keep pumping out the glue. Um, another thing you can do with a hot glue gun like this, that means a glue gun that runs very hot, is you can fill silicon moulds. And you can do the most marvellous things. You know, people fill them with clay or sometimes cake makers fill them with... Uh, for icing and so on and so forth. Well, you can do it with hot glue. And the great thing is it dries very, very quickly indeed and it's almost almost instant so I'm getting this you can see how the glue is moving around there forming around the edge, edge of that pencil well that's it that's where I want it and then I'm going to dip it into that ice diamond and while it's still hot it's going to pick up those chunky bits of crystal and then I'm going to dip it into my water. 
to let it cool and set. Yeah, that's looking good. Always monitor this because it is still hot and if you leave it it might fall off the edge but that, that's, that should be just fine. Now we'll move that out of the way. You won't really see the ice diamond coming to the fore until we actually start applying our acrylics which will be a little, a little later on and I'm going to continue with this glue again building up the bulk and we'll reach for another glue stick uh, keeping it turning all the time there we are. I want to build up quite a bit this time because I'm going to do something with one of my silicon finger protectors So pumping that glue out. There, we built up that bulk there. Now remember the one with the point on the end? That's what I'm going to use and I'm going to bring it against the glue like this and I'm going to twist the pencil. The finger protector is staying as it is and I'm just twisting the pencil. So what I get is a kind of a spiral or even a helter-skelter effect as this glue comes down the barrel of the pencil like that. So when that dries it's going to give me a lovely effect. So let's dip that in there. Let that cool off now. Well, wow, it's looking good already. I know, I know, I appreciate it. it's quite difficult to see at this point but You'll have to trust me just a little bit and we'll put that back into the water. And I'll reach for, let's put this off to dry one second and to cool. I'm going to open a pack of my Sizzix glue sticks. I usually keep these in a little jar by the side. Let's take my craft knife. Um, but I always, always make sure that I've got a few sitting in the channels of my glue gun holder. Glue gun stand, rather. There we are. Now, let's take that pencil, well it's not a pencil anymore, it's now of course a magic one and I'm going to this time again I'm going to twist twist the one and I'm going to add another ridge of glue, go back again and because you've got such a long handle or trigger I should say on this glue gun you can keep it pumping, you can keep a long consistent string of glue on the go. We'll go back again and we'll apply over the top of the last one. This will give me a little more dimension. And we go back in two just to get any stringy bits off. And that pretty much is that. So I'll pop it into the water, let that cool, set it aside to dry, and then we'll bring in our gesso. Okay, so here are my two wands ready to go. Um, the next thing we want to do is paint these with black acrylic or black gesso. Now that takes a little time, a little time to dry as well, so what I've done is here two that I prepared earlier. Now they look pretty cool at this point, um, 
But what we want to do, we want to we want to give them some dry brush. We want to change up some tones. I've got two different colours. We're going to do the the first one first. <laughs> Strangely enough, I've got burnt sienna and cocoa. Burnt sienna is a lovely brown. It, it's got a lot of red in it, so a lot of iron in the original pigment. So I'm going to take some of that now. We're looking to cover about 80-90% of this, but I'm not loading up my brush with too much colour. Because I'm going to be... I want some of that black to come through. That's my shadow. Um, it's quite difficult for you guys to see the effect that this is having. But remember, this is just my base coat, so the differences are quite subtle. Work in the top as well. And this, and one of the things about glue, about this hot glue technique, it does give these ones a wonderfully organic feel. Um, quite woody. Really, you could imagine that this was a gnarled old piece of wood cut from a blackthorn hedge at some point. Incidentally, don't go cutting up blackthorn hedges. The, the farmers will not thank you for it, especially the ones around my place. Um, there. Now, this is, I'm working now on the barrel of the pencil. This is where we carved before, and that texture that we carved into this is really starting to come out as I go around with the paint. So I'm working from the top towards the bottom, but I'm having less and less paint on the brush as I get lower down because I want it to get um, what's that ombre effect. I want it to fade towards the base. There we have it. Right, that's pretty much it for the base colour. Great thing about these Americana acrylics is they're matte and they dry very quickly. So at the top, that is dry so I can work directly on it with my next shade, which is the cocoa. Um, if in doubt, let them dry. You don't, you don't really want these colours blending together. Now, with this, I haven't washed out my brush, you'll notice. But that's fine but I'm using a lot less paint than I was with the first coat with the burnt sienna. You can always build it up, you can always add more, you can go back go over it again if you're not completely satisfied with the effect but as I always say if you start off using too much it's hard to take it away. In fact your only option is to go back and paint it black again, which is no bad thing, because it's a lot of fun, you know? So again, we'll come in, just picking out the details. This is dry brushing at its best, and when I say at its best, I'm talking about not my skill level, certainly not that, but I'm talking about the effect that it gives. It's a very natural, as I said, very organic effect. I wonder if they did this when they were making the actual ones for the movie. That's a thought. Incidentally, if you want to, you don't have to, pencils are a wonderful gift idea. Um, but you know, you could use chopsticks, get some bamboo chopsticks. They are absolutely great if you're making a batch of these for a party or something like that. Um, or you could even go out, if you've got any woods near you, just go out amongst the trees, pick up any deadfall and, you know, any branches. Some of them may have a slight curve in them, some of them may have a fantastic bark uh, pattern. So you don't need to peel those back or use your craft knife on those because they're ready to go already. So that's my, that's my first one. I, I think that's looking pretty good. Hopefully the detail will show up better in the photograph which will be above this uh, this movie. I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to take my second one. Now this time what I want to do, I, I want to get, I want this one to be lighter. Um, 
almost looks like old bone. Now, but I'm starting off with this colour. This is true ochre. It's a very yellow, yellowy, almost mustard brown. And I'm going to cover again about 90% of this, letting that black come through showing the shadows and you can see at the top here you can see where that that ice diamond where we use that you're getting that lovely texture the contrast now between the ochre and the black beneath using the dimension to get that effect and you can see I'm still using dry brush but I'm using slightly more paint than I did before Um, I'm seriously thinking now about doing some more stuff with the hot glue gun. Um, we did a horse chander show some time back and we tried to show it as a creative tool, not just something that sticks two bits of wood together, something that you can actually use in your makes. Um, and it's great if you're a mixed media artist, if, if that's your chosen uh, way of expressing yourself then the hot glue gun is a wonderful tool it really is uh, I'm sure there's loads online loads of ideas um, but there's some really cutesy stuff as well and as I said when you use it to fill silicon molds oh my goodness the effect the effect is wonderful you wouldn't believe in fact I've shown it to people and they can't believe that it was done with a hot glue gun and that's not down to me that's down to that hot glue gun and the fact that it runs really hot um, and it fills all those little cracks and crevices in the silicone moulds. If you have a glue gun that doesn't run so hot then you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle to get the fine detail. So I guess what I'm trying to say is get a Sizzix glue gun. It makes all the difference. So there we are. We got that ochre coming on underneath there build up a little bit more. We want that yellow showing through, but it's pretty much going to be blitzed by the next colour that I'm putting it on anyway. So, that's looking good already. It really is. But not content with that, I'm going to come in with Antique White. Um, which is a, it's a very antique white, this one. Again, Americana colours. Um, now this time I'm not putting so much colour on as I did with the ochre so I'm taking a lot of that off the brush and you can see why. It's a very light colour this one. We have got one more, one more shade to go just to pick out the fine detail after this but the antique white just running that over there gives me that extra contrast. I mean you could do this with a single colour. You know you could paint it black and then use a single colour but when you mix up the tones, it's so much better bringing out the levels and the depth of the texture. There we are. A bit more around there. And we'll come down the barrel of the pencil. You'll notice I'm going up and down, up and down like that. This helps me pick out those lovely twirls where I ran down with the glue gun. Getting that contrast, you see all these little nicks and grooves where I carved into it with my with my craft knife. It really makes all the difference. Again, if you want an organic wand, something that looks like it's completely natural. Now, that again looks great already, but there's one last colour. It's light buttermilk. It's one of my favourite colours I use so much and it's an off-white basically um, and very sparing with this really am so get most of that colour off there and I start on the texture on the top this is where I applied that ice diamond if you haven't got ice diamond you might have micro beads 
um, you know, a very, very coarse glitter. Uh, lo lots of different options for you there. Even if you want to use coarse sand, I'm sure that would work, but you can see the, the way it's bringing out the contrast. Now, this one right on those edges, right on those high ridges. So this time turning the pencil. So you can see that the brush is just going up and down, but I'm actually turning this pencil as I go. Wow, that's really, really punching out. That, that's fantastic. Looking great. We'll come down the barrel of the pencil now. Again, fading as we go down, getting darker and darker as we go towards towards the tip of the pencil. Maybe a bit more up top here. And that and that's that's already dry pretty much because we're putting on such such a thin layer. And there are the two ones you can see because of the different tones, the different colours I've used. Quite a contrast there. Lovely gift idea. Here's another couple which we did. This one has more more twists and I've not been as careful with the glue gun. I've been kind of moving it around here. You can see all this lovely detail in there. I'm sure you can see it better on the photograph. And finally this one, talking of organic, you can see I've gone back into with the glue gun, twisting the pencil as I go like this, building up these layers that looks like um, Looks like old twisted knotted vines, but lovely effect, quite dark that one. So that's one, two, three, four. Very quick, gorgeous gift for any Potter obsessive and not just small children. I work with a group of a gang, a fantastic gang of people, many of whom are just the right age to be to have been caught by the Potter bug. So there we have it. Let the magic begin. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I know that I did, it's a lot of fun. And I think I'm gonna be making a lot of those for my daughter and her friends in the coming weeks. So thanks very much for watching. And if you wanna find out more about all of our Sizzix products, or if you just want some inspiration from the vlogs and the blogs, and pretty much all over the website, go to sizzix.co.uk. Bye.